asked my coffee. Dude, you didn't need any coffee. Yeah, I did. I asked you for one. No, you didn't. I asked, and you said no. Well, if you're gonna be there, you might as well do it live. Good morning, and this is Bay Area Broadcast. I'm your host, Jack Daniels, and with me, as always, Jimmy Bean, bringing you the finest news from around the Bay Area. And today we have a story from Carl Falter out at the Berkeley Community Garden. More and more students are getting interested in organic farming as a healthier and more environmentally friendly alternative to buying from a grocery store. We're here at the Berkeley Student Organic Farms, where we are about to learn about what it takes to farm organically. Organic means growing without pesticides or chemicals. Um, so that's what we are doing here. This is the UC Berkeley Student Organic Garden, and we are part of ESPM 117, an urban agriculture class. It's um, one of two ag classes left at Berkeley. So. Um, we're pretty special here. So every Friday we come and we grow our food. This is what we've been growing for the last couple months. We have all kinds of different stuff. Um, but what, why is it important? Well, supporting our local economies. When you buy from a farmer's market, you're, you, that money, you spend your money at the farmer's market and that money is going to be spent over and over within like the local economy rather than you going to Safeway and buying whatever produce, whatever tomatoes were grown in the Midwest or somewhere else in the country and shipped halfway across the states to, to come to be in your Safeway store, um, you're, you're supporting Safeway, you're supporting these giant corporations rather than our local farmers who are farming sustainably and like really need our help. So right behind me is our few piles of compost. And this is really like what I think is the key and the foundation to sustainable growing and to recycling because all this stuff is technically shit, stuff we don't want, literally shit, House, horse manure, um, any kind of manure, food scraps, food scraps, any kind of debris. So basically anything you don't want or would throw away in a natural environment would get taken back and put into here and we create compost because all this stuff that's bad and trash really has so many nutrients that can be recycled and then what we do is after the compost is created we put it back obviously into the soil and the new plants absorb the old plants nutrients. So. That's that's the cycle right there. And just pull the thing out. I swear this is too hot. Just pull it. I just pull it hard. Oh, uh, thanks, Carl. Um, keep up the good work. And uh, now we bring you our next story uh, from Carl Fulton uh, at the Berkeley Co-op, talking about the same thing. I think organic means to me that um, no pesticides and steroids are used on the plants and vegetables on the plants as they're growing. So uh, a lot of our vegetables, like they're in season and they're really good, but you we don't get them when they're out of season because you know without steroids and um, like toxic chemicals they wouldn't be growing. Right. So most of our produce is fresh in season. Um, we choose to buy organic um, for environmental reasons mostly and agricultural practices, kind of. It's better for the environment, um, it's better for your body. So this is the pantry. Um, this is where we keep most of our staples. Um, here's bread. You want me to? Here is pasta. This pasta is actually gluten-free. So a lot of our food, um, comes in bulk, and that's kind of how we're able to get it um, cheaper than what it would be. The reason it, we choose to support local farmers is because a lot of energy um, goes into transporting vegetables from like South America, and um, that's like a huge waste of energy when we have all these vegetables and fruits growing like in California. So, so by helping out local farmers, we kind of cut out that cost. Um, it's not necessarily cheaper for us because a lot of food coming from other countries is subsidized, so it's cheaper to the consumer. But um, because we're such a big house, we're 60 people, um, it's, you can have more of an impact that way when 60 of you are all buying all your food organically and local because you know 60 people is more of an impact than one person just buying groceries for themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Carl. And now on a much more serious note. Erica James brings you our top story of racism and violence in the ghetto.
the atrocities. Jimmy? And for our final report, we have Nigel Puffington, the Bay Area's favorite reporter. We are here today in Dolores Park in the San Francisco Mission District. A beautiful, wide open green space. It is the only such park in the area. The State Recreational <laughs> Department has announced that Due to essential maintenance, this park must close from September 2011 indefinitely. The information available is scattered at best. We, we know they want to make some public toilets and improve the landscaping, but really, does the park have to close indefinitely? Let's see what the people think. It seems like it's working just fine. It just seems a little unnecessary. To be fair, the bathroom is disgusting. I like it. It's I think that they should close it off in sections instead of the whole thing. Yeah. That doesn't really How make How do you close sense. off an entire park? Yeah. Oh, there's, yeah. there's a lot of parks in San Francisco that you can go to. It's yeah, not, but this park is different. <laughs> when I first moved here, this is one of the first places that I've been to and where I got introduced to my closer friends. And I don't know, it's that view and when I was first here I swung and it, it's like a memory or something I don't really want to let go of. Yeah, sure, I live in the city and probably here yeah, as much as possible. Maybe yeah. At least every other week or so. Good place to sit out in the sun and buy cold beer and cold water. A lot of what comes hand in hand with Dolores Park on a sunny day is an ice cream. Um, so I think it's definitely going to affect how businesses are run in the neighborhood. I heard they're trying to open like coffee shops inside Dolores Park and stuff like that, which I think is a really bad idea. And um, I know a lot of people in the neighborhood are actively trying to. Um, Petition against that, which I think is great because they should just leave it how it is. Being able to just relax in neighborhoods, I think it's everything combined is just that. Where will the people go now? The people who enjoy the simple pleasures of life, being out in the open air, walking their dogs, and drinking their Peppy Paps beer. Where will they go now? Nigel Puppington, Bay Area Broadcast. Thanks, Nigel. That about wraps it up here at Bay Area Broadcast. I'm Jack Daniels. I'm Jimmy Dean. And remember, Bay Area, stay ambivalent. Son of a bitch. <laughs>